All right. Well, spill the beans, man. What happened last week? Why do you uh, stop people? Why can people buy the GameStop shares? The people demand an answer, and they want to know the details and the truth. Yep. Yep. Um. Hey guys, welcome back. So the saga continues. Guess what? Elon Musk, of all people, yesterday was able to sit down and talk with the CEO of Robinhood, Vlad, whatever his name is. And it was really interesting. I tell you what, if Elon wasn't the CEO of SpaceX and Tesla, he could very well be an investigative journalist because he actually got much more out of Vlad than the media outlets have gotten over the past few days. So. This is quite a long, I'm basically just gonna shut up during uh, this, this interview. Um, I'll add a little bit of thoughts and opinions here and there, but really I'm just gonna let the interview play out. So without further ado, let's have a listen and hear Vlad's explanation of why Robinhood decided to halt trading or halt buying of GameStop. Uh, when was it last Thursday and from there onwards? So let's have a listen. Elon, okay, uh, Vlad, uh, can you hear us? Vlad the Stock Impaler. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, thanks for uh, thanks for inviting me up. It's good to hang with all of you. All right, Vlad, I was, what really happened? Give us the inside scoop. All right, well, I was actually hoping that uh, you would invite me up for the Fermi paradox part because um, this has been a very surreal weekend and week for me. Um, one of the really great things is all the people coming to uh, coming out of the woodwork to offer support for the company, uh, offer, you know, advice. So um, I got introduced today, um, and actually I should say, I just randomly downloaded Clubhouse a couple of days ago just to see what it was all about. So this is my first time literally using the app. But um, yeah, I, uh, I got introduced to uh, your friend Antonio, Elon, who had some good advice for me and then introduced me to you. You had some great advice. And then I figured, you know, I heard about this clubhouse and uh, this has got to be part of the simulation. So I just uh, thought, why not? So here I am. So I'm, a I'm actually um, I'm actually an adherent to the simulation hypothesis. All right. Well, spill the beans, man. What happened last week? Why do you uh, stop? People? Why can people buy the GameStop shares? The people demand an answer and they want to know the details <laughs> and the truth. Yep. Yep. Um, okay. So let me let me start by giving a little bit of background. Um, so I'm the chief executive of Robinhood. Robin yeah, we know. is actually a. <laughs> Just go I'll, on, I'll go through this quickly. Please. Don't worry. This is this is uh, this is important. Um, it's actually a, a couple of companies. So there's a an introducing broker dealer uh, called Robinhood Financial, and that basically is the app that you uh, know and love. It processes trades. Uh, you're a customer of, of Robinhood Financial. Then there's a clearing broker dealer, um, Robinhood Securities, that clears and settles the trades. And then we have Robinhood Crypto, um, which is our crypto business, um, all of which, uh, all of these are kind of different entities that are differently operated. So basically Wednesday of last week, uh, we just had, you know, unprecedented volume, unprecedented load on the system. Uh, a lot of these, you know, so-called meme stocks were, um, you know, going viral on social media and people were um, people were joining Robinhood and there was a lot of net buy activity on them, um, as you guys all know. And Robinhood at this time, I think, was number one on the iOS app store. Um, and uh, pretty close, if not number one, on, on Google Play as well. So just unprecedented yeah. activity. Um, and so Thursday morning, right? Um, so I'm, I'm sleeping. Uh, but at 3.30 a.m. Pacific, um, our operations team receives a file from the NSCC, which is the National Securities Clearing Corporation. So basically as a broker, as a clearing broker, um, and this is where Robinhood Securities comes in, we have to put up money to the NSCC um, based on some factors, including um, things like 
the volatility of the uh, of the trading activity concentration into certain securities um, and this is this is the equities business so it's based on stock trading and um, uh, not options trading or, or anything else um, so they gave us a file with a deposit and the the request was around three billion dollars um, which is, you know, about an order of magnitude more than what it typically is, right? So $3 billion, almost an order of magnitude more than normal. So for those that don't know, an order of magnitude, I had to look this up, is 10x. So normally the deposit would be about 300 million. Today or this this day, they're asking $3 billion, which is just insane. And this is money that Robinhood has to hand over. And as Vlad's about to talk about, this is actually more money. So in Robinhood's life, the total amount of money that they've raised is about $2 billion. So it's more money than Robinhood has ever raised in the history of their company, which is pretty insane. Anyway, let's continue. So, um, no, no, why, why and, was that so high? Like, this seems like, like, it, it sounds like this is an unprecedented increase in uh, demand for capital. Um, what formula did they use to calculate that? Well, um, yeah, and just to give context, you know, Robinhood up until that point has raised, uh, you know, a little bit around two billion dollars in total uh, venture capital up until now. So it's a big number, like three billion dollars is um, is a large number. Right. So um, basically the and, you know, I the details are we don't have the full details. It's a little bit of an opaque formula, but there's a component called the VAR of it, which is value at risk. And um, that's based on kind of some fairly quantitative things, although it's not, it's not fully transparent. So uh, there are ways to reverse engineer it, but uh, it's not kind of publicly shared. Um, and then there's a special component, which is discretionary. Um, so that's, that kind of acts as a multiplier and, um, basically it's discretionary discretionary meaning like it's just their opinion yeah there uh it's it's a little bit i mean i'm sure there's there's definitely more more than just their opinion but um basically well, i mean i, I guess like, it's based everyone, on growth what everyone wants to know what everyone wants to know is like did something maybe shady go down here like like it, it's like it seems weird that you'd get a sudden 10 billion dollar demand you know three billion, three billion three in the morning sorry how much yeah it was three billion U.S. dollars. Three billion. Okay, so three billion yeah, around. You know, just suddenly out of nowhere. Um, and what percentage I wouldn't, of that I wouldn't impute. Worth? I wouldn't impute shadiness to it or anything like okay. that. And actually, you know, the NSCC was reasonable subsequent to this, and you know, they've been, they've been, uh, they worked with us to um, to actually lower it. So um, it was unprecedented activity. You know, we don't I don't have the full context about, um, you know, what was what was going on in what's going on in the in the NSCC to make these calculations. But, um, yeah, essentially, is anyone, it was is a large anyone holding you hostage right now? Uh, <laughs> no, no, Blake I'm twice. OK. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Thanks for asking. But anyway, so this was uh, this was obviously nerve wracking. And I actually was asleep at this point. You know, the operations team was uh, was fielding this at at three o'clock. And then, um, you know, we got back. We put our heads together. Um, you know, our chief operating officer basically said, look, let's call up the higher ups at the NSCC and kind of figure out what's going on. Maybe there's some way we can work with them. And um, Basically, there was another call and they lowered it to something like one point four billion dollars uh, from three. Okay. So, OK, we were making some progress. Right. And then <laughs> but it's still a high number. So essentially, Vlad here is saying that there's kind of room to move and it's not just a hard formulaic number that gets spat out at them, uh, which I find is really strange. I would have thought it would be a little bit more, you know, this is the amount based on this, 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 and this. It seems like there's a lot of subjectivity behind it. Um, so I don't quite understand how it all works. I'll be the first to put my hand up and admit that. Uh, but 
pretty insane. It went from $3 billion to almost half of that. So that seems pretty wild. But anyway, let's continue. And then um, we basically proposed, well, let's let's explain how we plan to um, let's explain how, you know, we'll manage risk in these symbols throughout the day. Uh, we proposed um, marking these volatile stocks that were kind of driving, driving the activity position closing only. And then um, at about uh, an hour before market close market open. So five thirty or five in the morning, they came back and they said, okay, uh, the charge is, or the deposit 700 million, which we then deposited and paid promptly. And then um, everything was fine. Um, so that, that okay. essentially explains why we had to, um, we had to mark these symbols position closing only. And also why, you know, we didn't want to, we knew this was a bad outcome for customers. Um, you know, part of what's been really difficult is um, Robinhood stands for, you know, democratizing access to stocks. And yeah. we want we want to give people the access. So that's been very, very challenging. Um, but we had no choice in this case. We had to conform to our regulatory capital requirements. And so the team did uh, did what they could to make sure we were available for customers. So once they told the clearinghouse that they were only going to let users uh, sell GME and not buy, the deposit requirement went from, well, first of all, 3 billion, and then it went down to 1.4 billion, and then down to 700 million. This is insane. I wish I knew exactly how they come up with these numbers. And if you do know, if you know this area in depth, please explain it to me. Let me know down in the comment section below. How do the clearing houses actually come up with the deposit requirements? But I'd be really interested to know. Anyway, pretty insane that it went from 3 billion, and eventually by all the steps that Robin Hood said, what if we do this, what if we do this, it got down to uh, 1.4 and then 700 million. So, wow, anyway, back at it. Who controls this, this, this organization, this clearinghouse? Um, you know, it's a, it's a consortium, it's not, it's not quite a government agency. Um, you know, I, I don't really know the details of, of, uh, of all of that. Okay, but you know, and to be fair, like we were, we were. Uh, I, I think there was legitimate sort of turmoil in the markets. Like these are unprecedented events with these meme stocks, and you know there was a lot of activity. So there probably is um, so, some amount of extra risk in the system that warrants higher higher requirements. So it's not entirely unreasonable, um, but we did operational processes to make sure that customers that had positions could sell their open positions because obviously restricting someone we got a lot of questions about okay you had to restrict buying why didn't you also restrict selling and the fact uh -huh. of the matter is yeah. people get really pissed off if they're holding stock and they want to sell it and they can't right so i think that's that's categorically worse so um and lots of other brokers I think we're in the same situation. Robinhood was in the news, but you you sort of heard this industry wide, right? Other brokers uh, basically restricted the same exact activity. All right, so so it sounds like this this, this organization you know, it calls you up and they basically have a gun to your head, either either hand over this money or or else. Um, and so because I mean, like basically, what people are wondering is like, did did you sell your clients down the river or did you have no choice? And if you had no choice, that's understandable. But then, you know, we got to find out why you had no choice, and who are these people that are saying you have no choice? Yeah, um, I think that's fair. You know, we have to comply with these requirements. Financial institutions have requirements. Um, you know, the 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 formula behind these requirements. Um, I think. Um, it would obviously be ideal if there was a little bit more transparency so we could plan better around that. Um, you know, but to be fair, we were able to open and serve our customers and, um, you know, 24, 24 hours later, um, our team raised over a billion dollars in capital so that when we, when we did open, uh, well, when we do open tomorrow morning, 
uh, we'll be able to kind of relax the stringent position limits that we put on these securities on Friday. W will there be any limits? Well, I think there's always going to be some theoretical limit. Like we don't have infinite capital, right? Okay. And on Friday there were limits. Um, so there's always there's always going to have to be some limit. I think the question is, you know, will the limits be high enough to the point where, you know, some they they won't impact, you know, 99.9 .9 plus percent of customers. Um, so, you know, if someone were to deposit a hundred billion dollars and and decide to trade in one stock like that, that wouldn't be possible, you know. So this makes sense. Obviously, there is going to be some limit to how much one or users just in general can trade a particular stock based on these deposit requirements and how much money Robinhood has to hand over as you know, for these deposits. But I think Vlad, he recognizes the important issue here is to try and make sure that although there is a limit, you know, 99.9% .9 of Robinhood users just don't feel that limit, right? So it almost feels as though there is no limit to most users. Most users, their experience is not interrupted by any sort of limit. That's going to be the balance that Robinhood is going to have to make. They're going to have to meet these clearinghouse deposits uh, without putting their business at risk. Okay, so obviously Robinhood itself doesn't want to put their, you know, their business um, at risk of bankruptcy, but they also have to try and find the right line where, you know, users don't feel like they're being restricted in what they can do because, you know, reality is with Robinhood, the platform itself, mostly retail users are using it, obviously. So generally speaking, you wouldn't expect people to be trading millions of dollars on Robinhood at once. Usually for most users, I would imagine it'd be like, perhaps just say, for example, it's like a maximum. Most users, there's a maximum of $10,000 that they've put into their trading accounts. So for Robinhood, if you can set that limit to trading at, you know, $10,000 for, you know, GME stock, for example, then, you know, 99.9% .9 of your, you know, your users aren't going to feel that limit. And that's really important. That's the line that they're going to have to find so that the user experience is not limited and people don't feel like they're limited when, when in reality, there is always some limit. Anyway, that was pretty long from me. Let's get back into the action. All right. Well, I guess people really just want to know, you know, if you had no choice, then, then you had no choice. Uh, it's gone to head situation. Um, and, you know, then that's understandable. Uh, but then whoever put that gun to your head should, you know, be willing to answer to the public. Yeah, listen, and, uh, you know, I know there's, there's processes, this is unprecedented times, and to be fair to those guys, those guys. they've been, they've been reasonable. So, um, we are, I think the, the one thing that is maybe not clear to people is Robin is a participant in the financial system. Um, so we have to work with all of these counterparties. So we do get a lot of questions about, you know, why do you work with market makers? Why do you work with clearing houses? Uh, vertically integrating and getting, um, I mean, it's hard enough to, to build a introducing and a clearing broker dealer. Not too many people have done that. But the financial system that uh, allows customers to trade shares um, is sort of a complex web of multiple parties. And, um, you know, it's it's hard to, I, everyone says oh, it could be better, it could be improved. Um, it's it's just the necessity of, of trading equities in the U.S. that you have to do all these things. I mean, to what degree are you beholden to Citadel? I mean, like, like basically, if Citadel's unhappy, then I, I, what then what happened? Yeah, so that you know, there was a rumor that um, Citadel uh, or other market makers kind of pressured us into doing this, and now that, that's just false, right? Um, market makers execute our trades; they execute trades of of every broker dealer. Um, you know, this was this was a clearinghouse. Um, this was a clearinghouse decision and it was just based on the capital requirements. So, um, okay. from our perspective, you know, Citadel and other market makers, um, weren't involved in that. 
So that's the meat right there. That's your job now is to go back over that little bit about Citadel and you come to your own conclusion as to whether you think Vlad is telling the truth. Because for those that don't know the backstory, so Citadel is a hedge fund that was short um, GameStop and they also are big investors in Melvin Capital. In fact, they're one of the two entities that just bailed out Melvin Capital to the tune of like $2.75 billion, I think it was. So they have an interest, their investments, they have an interest in making sure that GameStop stock doesn't go through the roof because otherwise the shorts get squeezed and it's just a terrible situation for them. Now, here's the thing is that Citadel is a hedge fund that buys order flow from Robinhood. So Citadel provides revenue to Robinhood. So it is rumored, and I put that in bold and underlined, it is rumored that Citadel has flex their muscle or you know put Robinhood under pressure to not allow people to buy GameStop stock because by buying GameStop stock that spikes the share price up people that are short lose even more money that would be Citadel and Melvin Capital so that is a rumor that's been floating around so your job I think is now to listen to this section of this talk about Citadel and come to your own conclusion of whether you think uh, Vlad is actually telling the truth. I, before today, I'll be honest, I thought that he was not telling the truth. Having heard him explain it in much more detail in literally this interview by Elon Musk, um, I actually think that there, I actually am starting to believe that story that Vlad tells a little bit more, but I'd be really interested to hear your opinions on it. Definitely leave your opinion down in the comment section below. What do you think? Do you think Vlad's telling the truth or do you think he's telling uh, little fibs here and there? Let me know. Anyway, back to it. But wouldn't they have a strong say in, in who got put in? in charge of that organization since it's an industry consortium, not a government consortium or not a government regulatory agency? Um, I, I don't have any reason to believe that. I think that's just like, you know, then you're getting into kind of the conspiracy theories a little bit. So I just have no no reason to believe that that's the case, you know? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, well, I um, guess uh, so we'll see what happens with future actions. Um, hopefully that wow. was uh, insightful or you know, at least a little bit entertaining. Are you not entertaining? <laughs> So there you go, that is the situation. And as I was saying before, let me know what you think. Do you think that Vlad and Robin Hood are actually telling the whole truth and nothing but the truth? <laughs> or do you think there's some little half truths maybe blended into the mix? Uh, I'd be interested to hear what do you think the truth behind the situation with Citadel is? Vlad was obviously very quick to shoot down that idea and to say, nah, they're just rumors, it's just straight up false. Uh, what do you think? Let me know down in the comment section below. It is going to be some time before we actually know the full truth behind this situation. Um, but yeah, I would also be interested to hear your thoughts on what do you think about the explanation behind having to limit the trading of GameStop because of the various clearinghouse deposit requirements. Let me know that stuff down in the comment section below and give this video a thumbs up if you thought that Elon Musk did actually a really good job at getting information out of Vlad. He got much, much more information out of Vlad than any media outlet has done over the past few days. And I think the reason behind that is that the media companies, they want to try and, you know, they want to try and expose, right? So they, they, they almost come into the interview as an attack on Vlad. Whereas I think Elon, um, and I agree, I watched um, uh, Stephen's video from Solving the Money Problem. He brought up this topic as well at the end of his video, where he was saying that, um, that Elon really came at that interview. Yes, he asked the hard questions, but he came at it in kind of a joking, kind of uh, informal way, which I think actually really helped get more information out of Lad. And by the way, if you haven't watched uh, Stephen's video, then definitely go over to his channel and watch it. I'm gonna leave it linked. Uh, uh, up top over here, I think, or is it over here? I can't remember. It's coming up on the screen right now. Go and check out his video if you haven't done so already. Um, but that is my take. That is my opinion. So let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Leave a like on the video if you did enjoy it or if you found it useful. Check out Profitful down in the description below if you're interested in how I go about my investing. But that is it from me for today, guys. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.